1 Samuel chapter 30, start reading in verse 1. I don't, I don't usually read from the King James Version, but it, I'm reading from King James this morning because it has one word that I like better than the other versions. So, so here we go. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam and Jezreelitis, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, and every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me read that part again. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, this is not a scripture you're going to often see on a bumper sticker or a t-shirt, but this is one of the most powerful scriptures in all the Bible, I believe. It's one of my favorites. Because you see what's happened here is, is David, and, and this is in the time between when, you know, he's been anointed king, but he's not king yet, and Saul is trying to kill him, and Saul is chasing him all over the place and trying to kill him, and David is with a, a few men, a small army of men, and he's kind of running from place to place. And during this time, David and his men go out on some mission. And, and when they come back home, they find that while they were gone, this other group, the Amalekites, had invaded the city that they were living in called Ziklag and had taken all of their wives and all of their children. So they come back and find their city in ruins and burned and all of their loved ones gone. Now, they don't know if they're alive or if they're dead. They just know that they're gone and you can imagine the, the the horror and the panic that you would feel if you came upon that situation and it says that they grieved and they wept until they had no more energy to do that as you can imagine <clears throat> and in the midst of all this the people got a little bit fed up with david and said maybe we just need to get rid of this guy maybe we just need to stone him i mean these are david's close allies close friends saying this this is maybe one of David's darkest moments in his entire life. And yet it says David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't give up hope. He didn't quit. He didn't go in the corner and cry. He didn't get on Facebook and post, oh, I'm just having such a terrible time. And somebody feel sorry for me. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. And, you know, it's great to be encouraged. It's great to have people around you who will lift you up and encourage you. And, and help you out. And I thank God for all the people that I have in my life that encourage me. And if you have some people like that, you need to thank God for them. It's great to be encouragement, and encouraged and to have encouragement. But there are times when even those closest to you, the ones who have been encouraging you, think about stoning you. Think about getting rid of you. Think about maybe just giving up on you. And, you know, this was David, and he's in the midst of this personal tragedy and, and what do you do when you're there and it says that david encouraged himself in the lord and now i got to say those last three words of that sentence are very important in fact it's the most important because a lot of people can encourage themselves okay in different ways they can go read motivational uh, quotes and encourage themselves that way uh, you know, they could go watch some motivational speaker give a speech and tell you how great you are and how awesome you are and encourage themselves that way. But understand that David didn't just encourage himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord, in the Lord. It's, this is not some kind of self-help thing or some kind of self-centered motivation we're talking about. We're talking about encouraging yourself in the Lord. And, you know, really that's the only kind of encouragement that lasts anyway. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to give you five ways, five ways that you can encourage yourself in the Lord. If there's ever a time when you're not getting the encouragement that you need, 
from the outside, you can just use these ways and encourage yourself in the Lord. And you can remember these five things with this acronym. And the, the word is GREEP. G-R-E-E-P. I know that's a fake word. I made it up. But, uh, you know, some, some of the better preachers can actually come up with real words and, and good acronyms. And I'll, I'll get better. I promise. <laughs> but the word you get this morning is, is GREEP. GREEP. The G stands for get going. The first thing that you have to do if you want to encourage yourself in the Lord is get going. Get up. Do something. You know, I'm convinced, and, and we really have an epidemic in our society of um, depression, anxiety, especially among young people. They're, they're, they get depressed, and, and it's just so sad when you see the suicide rates of young people, of teenagers, of you know, every now and then you'll see a story of a 10 year old killing themselves and, and, and it's just so sad. And, you know, we can say, why is that happening? Well, we live in a time when kids are being taught that you evolved from a monkey that evolved from something else. And, you know, we're, we're just one big cosmic accident and you, you're just here accidentally. And one day you're going to die and you're going to be gone forever. Well, what do you think kids are going to do when you teach them stuff like that? They, they lose hope. They lose uh, you know, purpose. They don't have a, a purpose. So they, they, you know, often get depressed and, and down and, and that's why, but <clears throat> you know, we need, if you want to encourage yourself to get going, a man was once asked what he would do to encourage and revive a dead church. And his reply was, I would take up an offering for missions. Hmm. To encourage a dead church, he said he would take up an offering for missions. Why? Because sometimes we need to put the focus outside of our own self. If we're feeling down or we need encouragement, we need to make that focus outward instead of inward. And see, we could sit back and, and focus on ourselves and our own problems and our own issues. Or you can turn your focus outward. What can I do for the kingdom of God? What can I do in the kingdom of God? Because each one of us has a calling. Everyone has a calling. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a thing that God created you to do. Yes. And if you'll get busy doing that thing that God is calling you to do, you'll come out of that depression and you'll feel encouraged. There's a story in uh, 2 Kings chapter 7 of four lepers, four lepers who were living outside the city. They weren't allowed to live in the city. They were... They kicked them out of the city. They'd live outside the city walls. And, and living outside the city, it was just day-to-day -day trying to survive, trying to stay alive. And even worse, at this time, we read there was a, a war going on. The, uh, the city was under siege. There was a famine within the city. There was no food anywhere. So behind them, they have a city that's starving, that doesn't want them in the city. And then out in front of them, they have this huge army of enemies that uh, wants to come and kill everybody in the city. You could say they were in a bad place. But one day it says one of these lepers stood up and said, are we just going to sit here until we die? Let's do something. You know, let's try something. And they came up with this idea that let's just go down to where the enemy camp is. And, you know, maybe they'll take pity on us and feed us. And if, if not, they'll kill us. And either way, we're going to die. So let's just do something. We got to do something other than sit here and die. And, and when they did that and they went down, they actually found that the enemy camp had been abandoned. God had caused some confusion in that enemy camp during the night and they had all fled. And so these four lepers walk into an enemy camp full of food and provisions and anything that they could want. And so after filling their bellies for a while, they went and told all the people in the city about the uh, abandoned camp. But you know, this is kind of the attitude we have to take when we're feeling down and we need encouragement. I got to do something. I got to get up and, and, and do something. And you may say, well, I'm not sure what God is calling me to do. I'm not sure what I should do. If you read on about what David did, the first thing he did was he went and he talked to the priest and he started seeking God about whether he or not he should pursue these people who had taken their wives and kids. So you can start right there. You can start by seeking God, seeking God, praying uh, having, having a time of reading and studying your Bible. But there is something that you could be doing today. Amen. There's something that you could be doing today. So 
If you need to encourage yourself in the Lord, get going. Start doing something and you'll find that your outlook on life has changed. The, the, the second thing, the R, stands for remember. Remember. Remind yourself of what God has done. Remind yourself of what God has done in your life. David has a lot to remember. He is probably in a unique place here compared to all the other men where he has just seen God over and over work miracles in his life. And so I'm sure that comes to mind. It comes to mind when he was down there in the valley with the giant threatening to rip him apart. I'm sure all those things, all those times God delivered him came to mind and he remembered, what has God done for you? What has he done for me? We need to remember that when we need encouragement. Psalm 77 and 11 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. Amen. We need to take that scripture to heart. <clears throat> Y'all, the, the church that I grew up in when I was a teenager up until, I guess, all throughout my teenage years. But uh, we, uh, this was, I don't know if anybody remembers Corner, Cornerstone Assembly of God when it was out there by the flea market. But this is where I grew up. And and for a while there, you know, when we, when, church was just different back then. Okay. But yes. for, <laughs> For a while there, at the end of every service, we would get there. You know, people would be praying and, and singing yeah. and, and singing and singing and singing. And uh, we had this one song, and it seemed like we would do it every service. And, you know, the Spirit would move. We'd sing the song. The Spirit would move. And, but the name of the song, you may have heard it before, is called Look What the Lord Has Done. Yes. And we would sing that one or two or a thousand times at the end of every service and just singing it and but I don't know, there's just something about singing about what God has done and all the miraculous things that he's done in our lives and, and all the things we read about in the Bible that just uh, gives us joy and gives us encouragement when we remember that God has done these things. Because you know what? If he did them in the past, he'll do them again. Amen? He's the same God today as he was yesterday. It's encouraging to remember what God has done for us. And one surefire way to encourage yourself is to start remembering all that God has done for you in the past. Amen. The third thing is encourage someone else. If you need encouragement, find someone else that you can encourage. Encourage someone else. You know, one of the greatest positions that you can have in the church is not pastor. It's not deacon. It's not usher. The greatest position you can have in the church, I believe, is encourager. It's encourager. Yeah. And anybody yeah. can be an encourager. Yeah. You just have to make up your mind that you're going to be that person. Be, be somebody who can find the positive in any situation. Heard about an, a, a man and a woman, an older man and woman, was on the couch. And the woman got up and looked in the mirror. And she said, I don't understand. I'm only... 45 years old, but I look in the mirror and, you know, I feel like I look a lot older. I see these wrinkles and uh, my hair is thinning out and, and, and turning gray. And she looked at her husband to see what he would say. And he said, look on the bright side. At least your eyesight is still working fine. Amen. <laughs> I don't know how he did after that, but, but you know, you can be somebody who can find the positive in any situation, you can find the best in any situation. Be an encourager to those around you. Not that kind of encourager. <laughs> and I'll just say this. If you're a negative person, people don't like to be around negative people. Amen. If you're the type of person who is always finding the negative in the situation, people don't, don't want to be around you. They might not tell you, but that's the way they feel. I've been around people before and you could go up to them and say, hey, I just want a billion dollars. And they'll say, well, you're going to have to pay a lot of tax on that. You know, they just yeah. always, <laughs> always find the negative yeah. in any situation. Don't be a negative person. Be an encourager. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, in fact, commands us, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you're doing. That's a command. We are to encourage yes. and build one another up. <clears throat> so if you need some encouragement this morning, I recommend, recommend that you find someone that you can encourage. 
And if you encourage others in the Lord, you will soon find that you are encouraged yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> the next E is eat. Eat. I'm not talking about Burger King. Eat. <laughs> Elijah at one time found himself depressed and down, and he sat up under a tree all by himself, and he prayed that God would take his life. Elijah now, the man of God, the great mm -hmm. prophet. And you know what God did? He didn't take his life, but God began to send, uh, actually, I'm sorry, an angel came to him, and an angel gave him some food, some supernatural food, and he said, eat and drink, because you got, you still got a journey ahead of you. You still got something mm -hmm. to do. And so Elijah eat, ate, and of course, he finished out his mission. But, you know, Sometimes if we need encouragement, if we're feeling down, it's, it's because we haven't taken the time to eat like we should have, like we should. Now, uh, I don't have this problem in the physical. A lot of us don't have this problem in the physical world. We don't ever forget to eat. But uh, and I, I'll just tell you all kind of funny story. My son, my oldest son, he's not in here, so I'll tell a story about him. He, uh, you know, if he sleeps too late and misses breakfast, he feels like he has to make up for it, you know, later in the day. He'll be like, it's 6 o'clock, and he'll say, well, I didn't eat breakfast this morning, so I need to eat another meal and make up for it. Um, you know, not many of us forget to eat, but we do forget to eat spiritually sometimes. Sometimes we do neglect to eat the spiritual food. Of course, Jesus, when he was being tempted in the wilderness, in Matthew 4 and 4, he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, just as we have to feed our physical man, there's a spiritual man that also needs to be fed. And he is fed by the word of God, by hearing the word of God. And, you know, that can come in many different forms. Really, we have no excuse today to not be hearing and, uh, and reading the word of God. We can, Amen. I, I don't know about y'all, but I have 10 or 12 Bibles at my house. And I, on my phone, I have about four different Bible apps and I can get on the computer at any time and go to YouTube and find thousands of preachers preaching thousands of sermons, right? You can listen to that at any time. You can listen to it while you're driving down the road. You can listen to it while you're laying in bed at night. Uh, there's no excuse for us to go hungry spiritually. Amen. No excuse. <clears throat> when I don't eat for a while, my, my wife has this word, um, hangry. Hungry when I if it goes too long between lunch and, and dinner and then it's it's a combination of hungry and angry right mm -hmm. because I, I just get a little moody if it's been too long and I haven't ate anything. Well, if we're not eating sometimes, if we're not eating spiritually, that's we kind of get in the funk sometimes. We kind of get you know weak and lethargic and ineffective and um, just not right spiritually. So we have to be eating that spiritual food regularly. If you find you're becoming discouraged, I would challenge you to examine how much spiritual food you've been eating and maybe increase your intake. Amen. And the last one here <clears throat> is praise. The P is praise. And I did an entire sermon on praise not too long ago, but and I won't repeat all of that. But one thing I want to repeat when it comes to praise is that praise is an outward expression. You know, a lot of times we combine, we say praise and worship, you know, as if it's one thing, but these are really two different things. And, and worship is something that you can do quietly and, 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 and just silently. But praise is an outward expression. It requires some type of movement or noise or something. And you know, David was somebody that knew about praise. In fact, one time, if you read in the Bible, he was bringing the ark back into Jerusalem and he praised so much and he danced so much that it says his clothes fell off. And now I don't want to encourage anybody to praise that much in the church, but <laughs> you get the point, right? He knew about praise and he was serious about giving God the praise that he deserved. Now, you might come into church sometimes feeling down or, or you know, just kind of in a funk, but I promise you, if you'll start praising, if you'll start lifting up the name of God and and giving him the praise that he deserves before long, you'll realize that you're feeling encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Of course, you know of Paul and Silas that were that were locked in the prison. And 
what did they do? They began to sing. They began to sing praises to God. And, and they weren't doing this because they thought if they did it, God would give them some miracle. They were just praising God because they knew that he deserved their praise no matter what their situation was. Amen? Amen. If you want to encourage yourself in the Lord, start praising. Uh, I want to read you real quick in regards to praise what it says in Psalm 50. I'm sorry, Psalm 150, uh, 1 through 6. If you don't think praise is important, you ought to read this chapter because this is what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the harp and lyre. Praise him with the sound of Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Does that sound like a, a, a quiet praise or a reserved praise? No, that sounds like people are beating on instruments and singing and, and praising loud and, and singing out of tune, but praising God. Amen. So we've got to praise if we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And I'm closing, but I just want to say that, you know, I believe we Christians, we ought to be the most joyful, positive people Amen. in the world. Amen. And that being said, I understand that is easier said than done. Yes. I understand that life is life and there's going to be times when you don't feel joyful and you don't feel uh, like the most positive person in the world. But when we get in those situations, we need to remember, as David did, to encourage ourselves in the Lord, to encourage ourselves, not, not to throw ourselves a pity party, not to, uh, you know, get on Facebook and tell everybody how bad we got it and see how many uh, people can, can feel sorry for us. But, you know, sometimes that's the problem is we like our pity party too much. We like our... Uh, we like that attention we get from being down and being negative. And, and, you know, we need to shake it off and encourage ourselves in the Lord. And encourage ourselves in the Lord so that we can be the men and the women that God has called us to be. Yes. <clears throat> the end of the story, we only read the beginning, but the end of the story is that David takes his men, rallies his men, and he goes out and he hunts down the people that took the wives and the children. And he takes back everything that the enemy had taken away from him. Takes it back from him. And it all started when David, one person, it all started when one person made a decision that he was going to encourage himself in the Lord. Amen. It all started there. And I pray that you are surrounded by encouragers at all times. I pray that uh, you are. But if you're not, you may have to encourage yourself in the Lord. And that's okay. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Get going. Find something to do. Remember all the things that God has done for you. Encourage somebody else. Be an encourager to somebody else. Eat. Don't forget to eat the spiritual food that we need. And then praise. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you.